We continue our discussion in Hidden Statistics of Learning to Work with a Normal Distribution by examining the standard normal distribution or working with an area of one. Again, the competencies you need to master in this module are the normal distribution curve, the standard normal distribution curve, learning to read z-score tables, and learning to read t-score tables. And in this specific discussion, we're going to examine the standard normal distribution curve. Hang on and have fun. Notice as this curve comes together, we here we have a normal distribution. We still have a normal distribution. The many sizes of this curve provide infinitely many normal distribution curves. Now you remember all of the things that we learned about the normal distribution. The normal distribution presents for us a, a way in which the data are distributed around the mean, and most of them clustering close to the mean, and then according to the standard deviation, which a standard deviation, remember, is the average distance from the mean, we can determine what percentage of the data lie within certain boundaries. Now, I want you to look at this curve just a minute. I think you remember this curve, and this should look familiar to you. Remember, this is the normal distribution curve with the mean. We have one standard deviation below, two below, one standard deviation above, and two above. So let's make a little transition here. Suppose instead of mu, which could be anything, and the standard deviation, which could assume any value, giving us an infinite number of possible curves of different sizes, that instead we set mu equal to zero and the standard deviation equal to one. When we do that, here is the mean, here is one standard deviation below. Notice the negative indicates that it is below uh, the mean. Here's two standard deviations below. And these are, of course, positive. Now, you don't write the positive symbol, but it's there. One standard deviation above the mean and two above the mean. Pretty clever little move, whether you believe it or not. Now, let's look at a value such as 0 0.74. This little value right here of 0.74 is a data value given in the number of standard deviations that it lies from the mean. This raw data point lies 0.74 standard deviations above the mean. When we, when we find that position, we notice that we have a line that goes up. I want you to, to look at this. The area of the curve is divided. There is an area of 1 under the curve. But here we have a piece of that area that will be a set amount, and over here we have a piece that will be a set amount. Let's look at this another curve. Let's suppose we looked at negative 1.28. The negative 1.28 tells us that this data point lies 1.28 standard deviations below the mean. Remember, if 1 is a standard deviation, then one point, negative 1.28 tells us the negative that it's below the mean, and 1.28 tells us how many standard deviations that it is. Again, the area is divided into two parts, the part here and then the part to the right. Now, I know right now that this skill may not seem that important to you, and you're saying, well, why in the world is he teaching this? You're going to have to trust me for just a minute. We've got to build your skills so that we can teach you how to use the standard normal distribution. The reason that we have the standard normal distribution instead of infinitely many different normal distributions is so that we will only need one set of tables to read areas under that curve. If that area, if that curve grew very large, the area would change. If it grew very small, the area would change. But setting it with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one makes it very concrete. And we know between these values on this line, which end up tell being actually how many standard deviations the value is from the mean, we discover that we know exactly what area is divided out on the left of that point and what is out on the right of that point, which will be very, very, very useful to us. Now what we need to do is find a way of standardizing raw data into these values and then learning to read tables to get these areas. This is going to be fun. Well, remember when I asked you back there about what would happen if we set mu equal to zero and sigma equal to one? 
Well, the magic is, is that the area under this curve, the total area under this curve, actually becomes one square unit, or 1.000 square units. What is cool is about that these percentages, the way that they break out with the mean set at zero and the standard deviation at one, suddenly we discover that those areas under that curve and actual square units match the percentages of the normal distribution curve. There must be magic. As we close this exciting discussion upon our new theme song, my middle son reminds me that he is indeed the good. My oldest son tells me that he's the bad. Wonder who that leaves me to be.